Hello Virgo. My name is Paul and this is Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask that you connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And if there is anything you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. All right. And remember, Virgo, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And we start with this Ten of Wands. That is a lot of energy. It's a lot of weight on you, right? I kind of feel like we had the Ten of Wands for the last Virgo reading. Um, I kind of feel like you really need to uh, you know, focus on what needs replenishing in your life. Okay, with the Ten of, of Wands here, I feel there's a, a depletion happening. Let's put it into some context. There we have the Restoration, yeah. That's the Ace of Cups. That kind of confirms uh, what I was talking about. That we've, we kind of feel that maybe, maybe we're, we're being overworked, right? And I, I swear that is the theme of the last Virgo reading. Well. Let's see what we can do about this. See, we end with a Ten of Cups. This is telling me that we are replenishing what we need. We are restoring ourselves. Um, and let's see maybe if we can find the path from this Ace to fulfillment, completion, right? Perfect happiness here at the end. But let's first select our mystery card. This is one card randomly from the Smith Waite Tarot. We'll put it right here, Mr. Dao, the yin-yang duck, right there on top. And we're not going to look at that card until the very end, so don't even ask. Okay, And we'll see how that might tie everything together and give us the confirmation we need at the end of the reading. Okay, but We are doing something a little different. Uh, in an effort to make this channel a little bit more interactive, I'm... I, I want to see if we can raise our vibrations, if we can collectively tap into our intuition and start discerning this mystery card together, right? So if at any point during the reading you get an idea, a sense, a feeling of what that is, I want you to put your prediction into the comment section, all right? At the end, we'll have a moment of stillness. We can all give our final answers, and then we can see how accurate we, we become. Over time, I think we'll see that we might... Um, get more and more accurate, right? But first, let's take a look around the room. Major Arcana, we have two of them. And interesting with these two, looking at them side by side, by side we have the Luster Strength card and we have the Star card. They rather look the same, don't they? The figures have a rather similar uh, gesture, similar aspect, that the arms even are in similar... Um, positions. I, I never really noticed that, and that's going to be interesting when we come to talk about these major arcane energies. These are the spiritual energies. It might be kind of a the creative spirit within, the creative spirit without, right? Maybe we, tr we are trying to reach deep within ourselves and pull out our magic, our creativity, and we're also trying to reach up to the stars and pull the divine energy down, right? Kind of a, maybe an evocation, invocation kind of uh, thing here. That's very interesting that it's, they are so similar. Okay. Uh, fire energy. We do have some with the 10. And that's the majority of the, that's all of the fire energy. Uh, the luster strength card is also some fire. But as far as the wands go, I feel like maybe we're feeling depleted. Maybe our creative magical energy is running a little dry or it's getting a little thin right? We need restoration. And in order to restore ourselves internally, maybe we need to open ourselves up and um, receive this divine energy from the outside, right? Well, let's see, for water, we do have these three water cards. We have a little bit of air, and then we've got our earth energies here. So it is, uh, you know, sort of balanced. There's a little bit of everything, I guess. But there seems to be um, 
an extreme of fire. This is a, a raging fire that I think is starting to kind of fizzle out now. And we're looking for a way to restore that. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's, well, gosh, yeah. I, let's talk about the 10 and the ace here. Because I, I kind of feel like you've been very focused on um, your work, your projects, your creativity, your your efforts, right? I almost feel that you've not taken a break since the last reading, right? Maybe that's why I'm kind of remembering this energy from last time. I feel like we've just been going and going and going and going, okay? And I, I'm kind of getting this feeling like we are realizing painful truth here, right? Maybe, uh, maybe finally being forced to acknowledge that we need a little time, that we have to maybe um, take a step back, right? The Ten of Wands sometimes to me indicates the need to delegate, the need to share the load, right? Or even for us to put our stuff down and just rest for a while, catch our breath, so to speak, catch our fire again, right? And then we can pick up our stuff and we can go again. Um, it's almost like we have to, we have to put down what we're carrying so that we can receive the spiritual gift, that we can receive the divine. I have to put this stuff down so my hands are free, right? To kind of catch the, the vibe that's coming down. So I think that we're occupying ourselves with a heck of a lot right now. And it is this idea that we, um, we need to kind of <clears throat> put it down, delegate it, right? Take ourselves out of the foreground, put ourselves in the background. Open up our hands so that we can receive the divine gifts, the blessing. We can receive this Ace of Cups. Right. We might be holding a cup, like a spiritual uh, alms bowl, and as the star card depicts, um, that energy is coming down. Right, And then we're able to heal and restore, rejuvenate, recuperate, and then we can extend ourselves outward again. Okay. Um, so I, I'm getting that vibe anyway with the 10 here and with the ace. I think it's a great time to focus on what needs restoring. Right, Your health, your finances, uh, your, your creative energy, your passion, your enthusiasm and confidence, your magical abilities. Whatever it is that we're kind of we're depleting through our work, through our efforts that we know needs to be restored. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this, this Knight of Cups in the background here, this is kind of in our past or what's behind us. Um, I feel like there's I feel like there's someone close to you. They may be a Cancer sign person. They may be a Water sign person. It could be that they're an Aquarius person. No, I, I don't. I don't think so. I think they they have a more of this water energy. And I feel like this is uh, kind of a clash. We're we're kind of we're at odds with this this person, right? Because I feel like they're trying to. And how do I put this? Um, they're almost bringing you a glass of water and saying, "Drink it." You know, and you are kind of refusing, right? No one wants someone that's that's pushy. This feels like someone who's very pushy. They may have your best interest at heart. They may be telling you, sit down, rest, sit down, rest. And you don't like that, right? Even though you know you need it, you know it's good for you, um, you don't want somebody else to be pushy like that, to tell you what to do, right? So I see like this person is is bringing you this this bowl really i mean that's a, that's another cup right they're bringing you what you ultimately do want and need but you're refusing it because of the way they are bringing it to you that they're kind of flying in your face forcing it shoving it right in your face nobody likes that right 
So I think we're kind of rejecting this, and this is putting us at odds with someone that's probably a loved one, um, maybe a spouse, maybe a friend or family member or something, okay? Um, and I think that really is just adding to the, some of the frustration that we feel. But this darn Nine of Swords. Now it's the Nine of Swords. We do need the Botanical Inspirations uh, card. So we're going to pull that out. And we use these anytime we get basically any swords. We get a three, five, seven, eight, nine, ten of swords. Um, we're going to do that. Because the Nine of Swords here, this is something that's within us. It's like we, <clears throat> it, we know, but we don't want to admit right? We, it's almost a pride thing, right? And of course we get that with some of this Leo energy with that luster strength card here that we, we know they're right. We know we need to stop and rest and replenish and reconnect maybe with our ace of cups. We know we need the ace of cups, whatever this exactly is, but we're kind of stubborn. We kind of don't want to admit it, right? So the Nine of Swords down here beneath everything, this is us not wanting to admit it because we feel like it's going to disrupt the flow of energy. We feel like it is going to um, it just shake things up too much, you know, that it'll cause a delay, it'll cause a disruption, it'll create a fuss, and we don't want to do that, right? Um, I feel as if you're someone who kind of silently suffers, you know. Let's do our inspiration card. This is the Magnolia. Nobility and self-esteem. Interesting that we have those two words here. Nobility and self-esteem. There is nothing noble in being superior to your fellow men. True nobility lies in being superior to your former self. Ernest Hemingway said that, apparently. Uh, it, but the nobility and self-esteem. See, the Leo is that nobility. And the Nine of Swords is that self-esteem. Or what is kind of... What might be threatening our self-esteem. Okay. Um, so this is, to me, this kind of suggests that, look, we need to take the help that is being offered. We need to take whatever this, if someone's bringing us the medicine or the elixir or the glass of ice water, we need to take it. Someone is offering us the opportunity to go take a day off, go rest and, you know, or whatever. We should, we should accept that, right? Um, and I feel like this is, I feel like this is a pretty poignant card here. There's nothing noble in being superior. True nobility lies in being superior to your former self. So it's kind of this idea that we have to over, overcome um, kind of our own pride, really, in a way. You know, in order to admit this to ourselves that, look, things are getting a little too tense, or there's a little bit too much friction, I'm getting too drained. I need to go take a rest, right? It's not, um, with this lust or strength card, it's not, we're not, we're not admitting weakness. We're not in any kind of a, a weakened position, right? There's a certain strength in that, in knowing when, uh, when to take that break. So in the future, we've got this lust or strength card. And this, I think, is the regaining of your inner strength, confidence, your magical abilities, right? We are drawing from that deep well. We're pulling that ace of cups right down, right from within ourselves, right? This is, I think, this is kind of the interior landscape, whereas the star card is the exterior landscape. And, um, and to me, there's the simple dichotomy here, uh, whether our true strength comes from within us or whether it's something that's coming from outside of us. Of course, the star is in the position of what we don't want. We don't want to be reliant or dependent on anybody else. 
That's also another implication of the Ten of Wands. Sometimes the Ten of Wands can talk about codependence. See, like we need somebody to carry half the load for us because we don't feel we could do it ourselves. Well, that's not you. You've got this nobility, this pride, this sense of, I can do it all myself, you know, that I have everything I need within me. I don't need anything from outside. Uh, and that's why I think we're rejecting the star energy because we don't, we don't yet feel ready to accept help from outside. Okay, from others, from perhaps this one particular water sign, maybe, person. But ultimately, up here, we've got the princess of pentacles. Ultimately, we, we have goals. We have aims. Um, we are trying to get some stuff done. We have, you know, there are, are things that we're trying to do in life. And this has to remain our ultimate guiding force, right? that if we are a little bit too too proud to ask for help are we really are we really keeping our goal as kind of top priority or is it merely that we don't want to have to swallow our pride or that it's going to injure our self-esteem a little bit now this might not be a very popular reading and i'm okay with that um because I feel like it, it, we need to talk about this, and we can't always gloss over everything that's uncomfortable to talk about, right? So the Princess of Pentacles. Keep your goals as the top priority, and allow, allow yourself to shift and adapt and realign your energies and your perspective to always keep this goal in mind, okay? Is it going to help or hurt your goals, your progress, um, by uh, taking this this gift, this opportunity for rejuvenation, restoration, or this kind of return to health, or whatever the Ace of Cups is that's being offered to us. If we accept that glass of water, are we helping our progress or are we hindering our progress? And I think that has to be our that has to be the, the question by which we judge what we do, the decisions that we make. Okay. So we're moving to the path of the serpent, and we see the four of pentacles right at the beginning. This, it, this is us back in balance. This is us restored. This is also kind of a, an energy that says when you're sick, you just want to kind of um, isolate. This can be a very isolating energy, the Four of Pentacles. It's safety, security, stability. It is structurally sound, but it is it keeps people out. Right? This is a uh, sick or injured individual that doesn't want to see anybody, hides away, won't let anybody come over. People are trying to bring you some chicken soup, and you're saying no. Uh, you won't answer the door, won't answer the phone. You know, people are trying to take care of you. Um, so there's the tendency for that. Okay. We have to be aware of that. The next card here is the, the queen of pentacles here. This is the position of the environment and your relationship with the environment. I think this is how we would like to be perceived. We want to be perceived as someone who is in charge of everything, capable of doing everything. Um, it's as if the Queen of Pentacles is saying, no, I'm the one that takes care of everybody. You don't take care of me. I take care of you. Right? This is an energy that needs to look at the past and see the history here. See the patterns in your own life, your own personal life. Apply those to what's going on right now to make decisions for the future. This is kind of a turning point card. The Queen of Pentacles is looking back over that long and winding road. That is, at the same time, it's the past, but it's also the future. And this is the time now to learn from the past, learn from the patterns of behavior, and apply those lessons, that wisdom, to your current decisions and how that's going to lead you to the future. Okay. 
And again, the position of what we don't want here is that star energy. And this really, it feels to me that you are self-reliant to a fault, right? Self-reliant to a fault that you would rather wrestle with um, everything than to, uh, to be given something right from outside or almost like a, a charity kind of thing. You'd rather struggle than just get, uh, get a handout, so to speak. And that's just an example. I don't think that's what's going on. But with these two energies here, it's very interesting. One kind of looks more internal, more subterranean, perhaps. And this looks more extra terrestrial, looks more external, more kind of outer space, right? Inner space, outer space. And it's really the same thing, right? It's just where we're, where we're getting it from or where we think we're getting it from. So I think we really need a balance of these two energies. I mean, just looking at this, it looks like something kind of interstitial. It looks like uh, intravenous kind of, right? It looks like we're inside the body kind of. And then here, obviously, this looks like we are, um, you know, in a more um, extraterrestrial kind of landscape. But it's the same idea of pulling something in that we need. Right. Uh, so I think that we've been mostly in this kind of Leo pride kind of energy. Everything we need is within us. And what we're rejecting is this idea that there is anything uh, externally that we need that we can't find within us, right? It's, it's, it's kind of the same thing, but it's just different perspectives. So having this card here also tells me that maybe we need to kind of look at this thing from different angles, right? What is it that you're working on? Um, maybe a fresh perspective is going to truly benefit the work that you're doing and maybe taking this time to restore yourself, replenish yourself and kind of recuperate and just get your vital energy back. Maybe this is a good opportunity for you to also get some different perspectives, right? Look at this thing from different, different ways. I don't know if it's a business thing, if it's a personal thing, a creative thing. Uh, it seems like it could benefit from a fresh perspective, okay? And ultimately what we're arriving at is this perfect happiness. Right. This is picture perfect happiness. So this is again, it's this is the end of the road, but it's also at the top, just with this princess of discs, too. They're both at the top of their paths, right? So it's kind of well what we're looking at. What we're looking up at. What we're aspiring to, what we want. And so maybe we need to ask ourselves the question is what the progress that we're making, the ultimate goal of this work we're doing, is that going to create our perfect happiness? What does your picture perfect happiness look like? And are these are they the same? Does it look like this? Right? This is the fresh perspective that we need. Right? It could be as a possibility that as you take this little time out, this break to... to um, you know, sip on your ace of cups here, that you might realize that you've been kind of, you've been breaking your back for something that isn't really going to lead to your picture perfect happiness after all. Maybe that's something we don't want to admit as well, you know. I'm not saying that's the case, but I'm saying we need to, we need to look at that. We need to maybe get the confirmation that this is, yes, that there is this is the same as this. Our picture perfect happiness will be realized when we achieve this. It is the, the same, these are the same goals, right? Let's look at the mystery card now and see if this gives us any additional insight, all right? And this is the point of the reading where I'll ask you to try to connect with these energies and these images. Let's see if we can predict this card Together, let's tap into our intuition. Let's tap into spirit, into source. 
And I'll switch the camera here so you can you can look at these cards again. Put your prediction into the comments section. Don't put the answer into the comments because there are people that will come after you uh, that also want to predict this card. So don't uh, let's not spoil it for everybody else. Hmm. I'm I'm kind of expecting an ace of well anything really, but an ace of swords would be good. Yeah. Mm. Maybe an ace of swords, maybe a a six of cups. Right, because that would show that we're kind of getting the ace. It's it's evolving into a six, which is the kind of the 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 harmony, the uh, mirror image of what we really want. Now it's kind of it's we're certain of it. We have a, a crystal clear perception of it, and then we get to that ten at the very end, and the ten is the full materialization of that energy. Right, so a six is a nice balance in between here. Let's see what we have. No, it's a, it's a king of cups, and that is air of water. Air of water. So this, to me, is... Well, this is us trying to live authentically, right? This is us being willing to admit, at least to ourselves, what we really need, what we really want. That water energy that we're talking about, with, especially with the Ten of Cups, our ultimate happiness. This is us getting the fresh perspective on that because there's air inside of this card. It's the air of water. Right? It's our understanding and our truth being expressed through this water energy. We're reflecting upon it. We're feeling it. We're connected with it. So this is the fresh perspective on, um, on what we're doing and, and why we're doing it. Right? Why we're doing it. So I think this is a good confirmation, and this is this is really um, confirming what I was talking about earlier, wh where we're in this we're in this kind of restoration, this restorative, this restful period, and it's it's within this water energy that we're going to get that perspective, that certainty. We're going to come to that understanding, that wisdom, that truth of things. Right? It's within this water that we'll find that air, that certainty. So I think this is a very, very good confirmation card. Now we're going to do an extended reading. If you want to stick around, click either above or below in the video description. New Virgo readings every Tuesday and Saturday at 6 a.m. Chicago time. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, all that sort of stuff. Um, Virgo, I want you to remember that you are the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you, and I love you, and we are all in this together.